Hello everybody, welcome back to Rancho Cordova Arts Art Tutorials. This is Cheryl Gleason and this is Mark Making 102. In our last episode you saw me do these uh, postcards where I put down um, 9 by 12 piece of paper, I taped it off so that we had four sections and we worked on four things all at once and no real concern as to one square over the other. So now we're going to take that same sort of thought process of creating four like objects or drawings, paintings, um, with, without the thought of each individual one. So we're going to take these four 8 by 10 canvases that I have here and we're just going to do the same process only we're going bigger. Now as you grow and get a little bit bigger with your um, pieces it does change in terms of the types of marks you may or may not want to make, um, how things look. We're definitely not taping anything off. I think some of you may have seen some of the uh, recent ones that I posted on Facebook um, just this past week, last couple days. That actually was going to be the lesson, but as I was videotaping, I had a couple of segments where it didn't come out and I lost all the voice. So we're just going to do a redo and you know what they say, nothing works best than or better than practice, right? So I'm just going to put some paint out here on my canvas and uh, that one's just getting towards the end of the white. Um, I like to do the, the white in a little bit of a line and then I can pull from each of the various colors I'm going to use. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use all these colors or not, but we'll give it a go. All right, so uh, as in our last um, video, we started by just, you know, making some marks, doing some uh, random lines, and uh, I hope you're all out there holding up during this, uh, this virus. So we're just going to let our arms go and we're just going to make some... crazy marks on here, you know, do some things across the canvas, break it up a bit, just see where that leads us, okay? So what I used there was a simple oil pastel, just to get down some, some marks. Now, one of the things that I normally like to do um, on these pre-bought canvas boards, which is what this is, or the actual canvases, I like to gesso them ahead of time um, because the, the product they have down there is, it's almost, uh, how should I say, it's, it's almost like a slick surface, like a, a plastic surface. And so paint doesn't go on as well. But unfortunately, I didn't have any um, gesso. So we're just going to go with that. So I'm going to start with uh, doing a little bit of gray and some black, making some, some marks. Remember that there's no thought process in this. We're just filling in some spaces. We want to get paint all through and over our canvas. Um, we should build up a couple layers with that. And see what comes out of some of those different marks that we make. So how is everybody's uh, little vacation going? I don't know about you, but uh, now we're in week seven. I actually, for the first time, got a little stir crazy yesterday and had to take a drive. As an artist, I do pretty well being pent up. Uh, but I do have a little bit of a social personality. 
as some of you may know. So, well, we have been uh, continuing to work, and hopefully we will be able to uh, have our June Pride exhibit at the MAC open uh, at the beginning of June. It'll only be, excuse me, <coughs> it'll only be the exhibit. We won't have any, uh, any other things surrounding the exhibit, like movies. Do sort of a slow run up to this process. Um, hope you all have procured or found some loving seamstress that you know in your family or somewhere uh, within your neighborhood that has provided you with a mask because as we open up you're going to need to have that mask in order to go into the, the gallery since we're not outside. I live in Yolo County and so I uh, we, we are we have to have masks. So let's talk about some art. One of the great things that I love about watching my fellow art artist um, do their their uh, their videos is I love learning the little bits of art history that everybody knows about and um, drops a, a little knowledge around that. Um, I love abstract painting. I've never been very good at it, unfortunately, um, but it's always been something I wanted to do. So this process, teaching myself this process, uh, has been a real saving grace of being able to sort of loosen up a bit, um, not care. I don't know how many of you got to come and see our Jesse Reno. Jesse Reno is out of Portland, Oregon, and, and he does some marvelous, intuitive, primitive work. Um, but there are so many great historical um, artists. When you think of mark making, you might look up Miro. He did, uh, he was part of the Surrealist group and uh, did a lot of work with shapes, color, form, line, uh, that made some, at the time, some very interesting works. And uh, the evolution of that was, uh, of his work, was really, I think, quite uh, interesting. Another one that I is, uh, I really love some of the, the Bay Area artists. Um, if you've never seen you know, sometimes a, a artist will start out being quite literal and, and figurative in their work, like Diebenkorn. And uh, then you see later on his ocean series or his landscapes that look like patches of, patches of land as if you were going over in an airplane. Um, and it's all about kind of the line and, and, uh, <clears throat> what you're kind of seeing from a, a bird's eye view. And his paintings, I just think, are uh, so great and unique. Um, and then you get into uh, somebody that started out again, a colleague of Mr. Diebenkorn's, and that is uh, Richard Parks. Uh, he, I think, Parks being a, one of the our Bay Area artists. If you've never seen any of his works, look up some of his his later works because they are absolutely uh, fantastic. I just love his painterly style. Um, and those of you that have tried to do art, one of the or abstract art rather, doing a, a nice abstract uh, and getting some good color and and different shape and form in your paintings is uh, is harder than it looks. So when I see something really great in a gallery or a museum, uh, and you know somebody walks by, my third grader could do that. I just want to slap them, but that's just me. 
Uh, we've had some amazing painters. Marsha Mason, uh, Ron Hall. I'm super excited being a huge Basquiat fan of, uh, which is very similar to the mark making that I'm doing. Uh, Basquiat was a <clears throat> New York artist. A uh, lot of your sort of abstract mark making kind of guys or gals start out as uh, taggers and uh, graffiti artists and that's kind of how they get their their start and in, in tagging buildings and sides of trash cans and all those kinds of things things that uh, for the longest time was really considered to be uh, a no-no and today there are some absolutely amazing amazing graffiti artists especially if you get into South America Puerto Rico oh my god the uh, the graffiti artists down there are just uh, well they're fantastic and real well-known one Banksy uh, Keith Haring started as uh, a graffiti artist um, some of you may know him by the uh, simple stick figures with little action lines coming off of them, real warm and, and inviting colors. Really popular and his work became very um, well uh, documented, especially during the uh, 80s, during the civil rights, gay civil rights movement because he was gay and there were a lot of AIDS ads and, and different things that that got put out with some of his artwork and that's kind of how he got to be a little bit more well known. So right now I've got this over here, this kind of really blue, uh, bright blue. It's got this vibrance and energy in it. It's cerulean blue. That is one of my favorites. Uh, this little more muted blue here. This is ultramarine, ultramarine with a little bit of white. This is just a, a, a lime green that I'm using here. Um, you know, it comes out very different in um, full strength versus adding, tinting it down with a little bit of, of white to see what you get. Um, I know it looks like, wow, we're, we're just covering up all that, that great color and texture that we had on there with those marks, why is this mark making? But uh, never fear, I shall reveal. Uh, think of the uh, initial mark making almost as a, an exercise. If you've ever taken a class, whether it be a yoga class or some sort of a, a workout, you know you always do a few stretches and you do uh, little bit of uh, warm-up exercises, maybe some jumping jacks, you want to get the muscles flowing. Those first initial um, marks that I make on the canvas are kind of like that. They're, they're, <clears throat> they're sort of to loosen up, get a little bit of the mind thinking on uh, creative flow. Also, it is very daunting to look at a blank white canvas or a page. Uh, writers and artists will tell you there's nothing worse than looking at a blank canvas. It is just the most daunting thing. Like all of a sudden it it has to be perfect. It's like getting your brand new car and you don't want to get a scratch on it. You're so very careful until the first scratch and then you're like, okay, well, that's over. All right, so we got, I'm going with some blues and greens and uh, just seeing where that goes. So we're gonna, we've got pretty much, I'm gonna throw a little yellow in there in some spots. Just to see where that goes. Now, I like to try to get at least touch all of the canvases with a little of the same colors. Again, whether this becomes a piece that gets sold as you know, a couple diptychs or uh, a foursome that gets sold together. Um, just gives it a little continuity when you've got the same colors. It also 
allows you to work with the same palette on four separate paintings and try out four different things. You know, and, and maybe you'll like one thing, but you won't like uh, something else. So just using different, different areas, different marks, different colors, and different um, amounts on your canvas is great. Now, if I had this on a, a, a little bit of a, a tilt or an easel, I might do a spray bottle and let some drips drip down and give, give us some texture on that. But right now I'm going to give this a little bit of a blow dry. So I'm going to put this on hold for a second and then we'll be right back. All right, well, we're back. This has had a little moment to dry. And now <clears throat> we're just gonna start going back and, uh, and making some marks back into our painting. Um, if any of you are uh, paint with oils, painting in acrylic first is oftentimes a really good process to uh, doing an underpainting. So putting your, your, a little bit of blocking out some color and some, a little bit of design is, is great to do in the initial steps in acrylic. One, because, especially if you're doing abstract, because it's dry so quickly. And the second is that you can start with acrylic and put oil on top of it, but you cannot do the reverse. So if you put oil down, you cannot put acrylic on top of it. Remember that um, oil is just like, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, acrylic is, is plastic. So plastic sitting on top of that oil will eventually peel off and give you some, some problems of the paint not sticking. Whereas if you have it the other way, then it's, it's much easier to get a good foundation down in acrylic and then overpaint in the much more uh, silky uh, oil painting that, that has a little bit more shine. And um, well, for me, it's, it's definitely appeal. Uh, but it, it does take chemicals to do and uh, it does create a commitment because you can't just leave it, work on a, a whole thing and then be done with it, especially unless you're doing all wet on wet. So now what I'm doing is I've got a, a liner brush, which is a little bit thicker or longer. Uh, it's a thin brush, longer on the bristles which allows me to do these sort of different types of, of lines much more easily and sporadically. And it holds a pretty good amount of, of paint as I go through the painting. Again, just trying not to think about anything too much. I do like a good circle, some geometric shapes. Um, very appealing to me. I know Trish, if you're watching, you're like, oh, that looks like kitty ears. All right. Now let's get a little white, thin that down a bit so it's nice and fluid. Um, nowadays you can buy paint in, in any viscosity that you want, but uh, I kind of stick with just the, the regular medium body then I can get it to where the consistency I like to use. And I 
think last time I also showed you a couple great uh, items. One was the uh, the watercolor um, crayons, the neo color. I think those are just absolutely fabulous to work with. To cross over the canvases, break the plane of one into the other. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the neo color. And these just go on so lovely um, that you can you can really sort of add some some color and I could take a, a brush dip some clean in there and kind of swish that around and it as you see, it's it's really a lot like a watercolor. It reacts like a watercolor. Marcia would be proud. I think she would like these if she's never tried them. I've had them for years, and they last such a long time. Um, And they're just and I could pick up a little paint from there, drag it over. Again, we're kind of putting down some different layers getting some marks on there we don't know what the marks are going to reveal to us or not but we're going to see where they all go look at that oh look at that that's nice whoa little eyeball there it'll even stay on your brush pretty good. Um, if you use this or graphite as on the on the final or top layer, um, you definitely have to do some workable fixative on it because it will run as soon as that little bit of alcohol that's in that fixative hits that water crayon. It'll just turn to mush. The same is, uh, is true for the, uh, the charcoal. It'll just smear and, and, and bleed all over the place. Now if you wanted to, and, and we'll do this in a, in a later video to do, take this concept and add a little bit of uh, texture with some multi-medium in there. We'll do a little bit of that a little bit later on. I'm going to take uh, some of my stencils that I made and uh, see what we got here. My stencil brushes are a little bit hard, which means I didn't do a very good job at washing them last time. Okay. And when you're doing a stencil, you kind of want, you don't want it completely dry brush, but you don't want it really, really wet. Um, because you don't want it to run underneath, <clears throat> underneath your uh, stencil, because then that's when it gets all blurry and chalky looking. So we're just going to use a little of this cerulean blue with uh, a little bit of white in there. And I'm just going to tap down at a 90 degree angle so that I'm only getting the cutout portion 
of the stencil. You might get a few, so that adds a nice little textural line in there. I might try this over here. There's a little bit more white in there. There we go. Tap, tap, tap. And you can put, uh, sometimes a little bit of paint looks really cool. Uh, sometimes uh, a, a lot of paint looks good. It just kind of depends on what you're going for. So again, there's no right or wrong mistakes. Who knows? That, that could all get covered up in, in no time. Uh, we just don't know. I try not to go over the side, but again, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. If you want to be pristine about it, that's that's okay. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm not going to get any more paint on my brush. I'm just going to tap in what's currently there. Might look a little bit lighter than the last one, but that's okay. Let's see what we got there. Just lift that up. Nice. I'm going to do the same on this one. I'm not going to get any more paint. This one might look a little softer. Not quite as bright. Not quite as saturated in color. Although these, these uh, stencil brushes hold quite a bit of paint. Alright. Okay, so we've got some, some interesting things going on there. All right, now let's uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of palette knife and mix a little hooker green with some of this cadmium yellow, cadmium dark yellow. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there and mix those around. So I can get kind of, if you watched Marsha's video on greens and colors and what what color nature really is versus how we perceive it um, then you'll recognize that most most leaves are not kelly green vibrant green uh, although they can be but the saturation of that color is is most of the time fairly unlikely so we're going to put a couple leaves in here and uh, I want to do that with something that's a little bit more muted, a little duller. But what will happen is it'll create a, a nice punch off of the colors that I already have. On this one, I'm going to do the whole, both leaves. We can do part of a, just a little bit of a, a square or part of it. Use your stencils as you want. See that, that kind of muted color looks really great on there because it's a little contrast, but because it's got this, it's still this hooker green and the combination of this yellow and the white, it, uh, it harmonizes well. It creates a good harmony in the, uh, in the picture. So we're going to try something on this one. We're just going to do a little little bit there. Just a, a partial. And then this one I'm going to do right there. Pick that up. What should we do over here? We do a little off the edges, both sides. I'm also, when I'm looking to put some of this color down, kind of looking at where did I put it on the last one? Am I creating, you know, some, some flow, some harmony in the colors? See how that green pops off that cerulean blue really, really quite nicely. 
this one just has some some touches and maybe we'll just do a little touch over here on this one just to give it the the tip of the the flower and maybe even a little bit less right there yeah that's nice bob ross would like that he would like that okay so now now that we got that we've got a good amount of paint on our canvas we've got a good amount of color on our canvas in most of the areas now it's about kind of creating some areas that we might like to fill in or do whatever again i I kind of uh, create these similarities on all four of the canvases to create a bit of harmony between them, especially if I'm gonna have a show that has multiple pieces of the same type. That way if there's specific look to one, it's very appealing to somebody but the geometry isn't settling but in another one it is then you you might just end up getting a, a sale for both because they like the one really well but they like it even better that they can buy two especially the the 8x10 size um, that, that's a really nice size to be able to buy two okay so we got some circles there Told you I really like the circles. Big fan. All right. So. Seeing anything that comes out. I'm just going to make some more little marks and give my eye a little, little guidance. looks like a fake signature there all right so now I'm gonna let this dry and we'll be back okay here we are again so everything dried and I did a little bit of uh, the color on on some of the circles and then took a little water did a little of this brought out that color the other way you can do this is to stick the uh, the 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 crayon right into the water and it becomes like a watercolor or if you have uh, water that's already on the the canvas you can do it that way too because it, it mixes that right in which is uh, really quite cool you can get some really nice soft interesting shapes but also keep a little bit of that line quality there and every once in a while mix it up and 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 use your left hand if you you know don't like the marks you're making with your right hand you want them to be a little bit more abstract in their quality Use your left hand or your non-dominant hand for those of you that are smarties and are left-handed. And uh, that can come out quite nicely as well. Okay, so I really like the colors that we have going on here. Um, I'm not really sure yet if I like the, the white being so white. Um, I might try and take a little bit of some of this crayon. Let's 
see if I like that a little bit better where I can draw right into that. Um, I like that a lot better. Again, not thinking about what I'm doing. where I make my mark more on a uh, little bit more choice of what color I'm using versus the mark I'm making. And also, it's okay to see if something goes well together. And those two colors work really nicely together. I really like that. I kind of like dipping these in the water because then you're kind of drawing and sometimes it's easier to draw abstractly than it is to paint abstractly. So, you know, just, just try to find different things that get you to the place that, that you want to be um, with your mark making. And it will become... Uh, the better, just like anything, the more practice, it will become a sophisticated language for you. And maybe what you see is uh, specific types of shapes, uh, specific type of design that you see. Um, maybe it's uh, another way, if you just are really stuck um, look at something, you know, look at something that's out in front of you and just kind of go through and, and draw the, the shape that you see. For example, let's get a little charcoal out here. I'm going to use a little compressed charcoal. And I'm just going to look over at that wall over there and I'm just going to Go along the outline of some things that I see over there. Um, with this, it's it sometimes doesn't show up as well, but sometimes these little kind of insignificant marks in the background, a little bit lighter that you see, uh, kind of get the draw the viewer in. Like, did that person mean to do that? Is that was that a planned? Uh, did they plan to do that that mark there? So putting some of those little innuendos in there to get them to, to really look at it um, is, is not a bad thing. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, white. And I'm just I'm going to start doing, beef those up a little bit.
So I'm now to the point where I am starting to think about this a little bit. So I'm going to make a few little marks. Probably going to take me about 10 minutes and then I'm going to come back with the, fam the uh, final project. All right. See you guys in a minute. Okay, so here we are. I broke them up and, so that you could see a little bit better of what the final result is. Um, the great thing about these are because they're abstract, even though you did them one way, um, it might look better uh, hung a different way. So this is one of them. Okay. This is number two. Okay. This is number three. This is number four. This is actually, I think, my favorite one. I don't know. I, I'm having a hard time. But uh, all together, I don't actually remember which one went where, but all together, this is our grouping of our four pieces, which now we have did them as one. But now we have four, or we could frame them and hang them as a larger piece. So that's it for today. This has been Mark Making, and my name is Cheryl Gleason. I want to thank you all for hanging with us here in week seven on our afternoon four o'clock Facebook posts. And we hope that you have taken something away that you can use in whatever medium you work in. And if you're interested in doing a video and you're one of our local artists, please contact either myself, Cheryl Gleason, or Eileen Neuer, and we would happily get you on the schedule. All right, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. We'll see you next time. Bye.